Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager for Autodesk. In today's Tips and Tricks, I will show you how to use Accent Light in Showcase. Okay, so you have a nice interior scene here, which is composed of two walls, a floor, a chair, and two paintings on the wall. Now I have dropped some environment here to have a supportive images in my background. And of course, this environment is giving me a certain type of lights. Now, if I want to simulate this room to be an interior room or a night scene, which would not receive any light from outside, then perhaps I'm going to have to think about starting to add accent light to my scene. So let's say here I am in the um, you know exhibit hall and there's a little bit of light coming from the environments, but it's not like a scene light or it's not a light I can control. Or perhaps I'm using a um, environments that is a night scene and there's no really source of light on this chair and I want to just add emphasizes on the chair. Um, I could also use a totally pitch black environment, which gives me almost no source of lights. And, you know, it's not really highlighting my chair here, which is kind of my hero or maybe the paintings on the wall. So first thing you'll do is choose an environment that is a night scene or that give you low amount of light and perhaps adjust the exposure value to the level that you want. Now that you have a scene with very minimal uh, light source, let's see how we can start adding accent lights. First, let's clarify something. You might not want to have the light from the environment and only use accent lights. Now to do so, you can call the directional light and shadow properties and stop the environment light. So just uncheck it from casting shadow and uh, having light direct directly affect your uh, scene. So here I only have ambient light that is coming from the environment, but I no longer have direct light which will cast shadow into my scene. So now my scene will have to count only on accent light to bring in light and cast shadow because I no longer have any coming from my environment. So let's press L to open the accent light menu and we will create a selective point light to start. So I dropped one in my scene. I'm just going to move a little bit to see where that point is. Now, I highly suggest that you are showing the um, grip because right now it's only a little green dot, very hard to find. But if I show the accent light grip, it becomes some sort of a more substantial grip that I can select and move around. Now I'm moving it around and it doesn't look like it's lighting anything. Well, in showcase, you need to tell uh, the accent light what to include. So I've selected everything and uh, right click on my point lights and add selective to the light. So now when I'm moving my light around, you can see that is lighting all of the elements in my scene that are included in this light. So now you see the effect of this light into my scene. So I'm going to position it just above my chair. Um, you know, you move around to position uh, this accent light the way you want it. And I'm going to call the property and we'll have a look at the property panel to understand a little bit more how this light behave in the scene. So the first thing we did was to associate all the object in our scene to that particular light, and then we repositioned it. Now it is possible to adjust the color of that light to any color possible on the wheel. And you'll see that as I am moving to different color, you see direct feedback in the viewport. Now let's go back to a white uh, light. The next setting has to do with the intensity or brightness of that light. So how intense you want that light to be in your scene. Do you want it to be a supportive light or the main source of light? Then the drop off distance is how far this light is affecting in your scene. So what is the sphere around uh, your light and how far does it go? So if I reduce it, that sphere becomes smaller. And if I increase it, then it lights up farther away from the light source. And the drop off rate is how does it decrease while moving away from the light source. So is it a sharp decrease or a soft decrease? Now cast shadow on or off. When I'm on hardware rendering mode, um, it's not showing any difference. I need to go on the ray trace in order to see the cast shadow of the accent light. So you see now I've turned into ray trace mode and I can see the shadow of this light as I am moving the light 
around my model, you'll see that the shadow is reacting. So, so the accent light will only cast ray trace shadow. Now keep in mind that all the objects in my scene are being affected by this light, but if I select the wall, I can remove it from the light source. So remove a selection from the light source, and now my light is only affecting everything else in my scene except for the two walls that I have removed. So for now, I will reduce the intensity of that point light pick a right angle and only use this light as a supportive light in my scene. And I'm going to create spotlight to light up the artwork on the wall. So let's go back to the accent light menu and create a selective spotlight. So again, the transform handle are outside of my view. So I'm just going to move out and you see that I have my spotlight here that I can move. And as I'm moving it, it doesn't look like it's affecting my scene whatsoever. And the reason for that is that I haven't associate any object in my scene yet to that spotlight. So with the painting selected, I'm going to add selection to my spotlight. Now to position that spotlight, I'm going to open the properties and choose an auto placement. So I'm going to choose to place place the light in front of my painting. So automatically that light gets dropped right in front of my object. I can also choose to place it above my painting. And if I move away here, it seems like it's not really lighting my object anymore, but it is. It's just that it's, it's straight in top, on top of my object. So I'm going to move it slightly and I'm going to rotate it. So now you see that it's lighting my object. Now it's only lighting the painting for now. So the effect is not as real as I am expecting because there's no effect on the wall yet. So I will have to choose the wall and add it to the selection. And now I can really see how that spotlight is lighting the painting and the painting is creating a shadow on the wall. So I've also added the painting next to it and I can add as many elements as I want. So of course I can change the color of that spotlight and some of the properties will be similar to the point lights that we just added, such as the light intensity, for example. So if I change the light intensity, there's, the light becomes brighter or less intense. The next setting is the drop off distance and similar to the point light, it will affect how far that light is lighting your scene. Now you might need to add a few um, elements that are being affected by that light to really see the impact of that. For example, my floor is not part of the selection for that spotlight. So I'm going to add the floor to the selection. And now you can see that the spotlight is really lighting that floor. So I'm going to reduce the drop off distance because I want the spotlight to mainly lit the painting and not so much affect the floor. Now the drop off rate is similar to the point light and it affects how the light is being diffused while moving away from the light source. The cone angle is only uh, present for spotlight and that is adjusting the cone of the light. So you see as I'm reducing it, the light cone becoming smaller and bigger as I'm increasing it. Penumbra angle is, a, is slightly similar to that, but affects the graduation of that uh, angle. Now you also have a radial drop off that affects that cone of light again, and you can choose to cast shadow or not. And you have an extra setting here for the spotlight that is affecting the softness of that shadow. So we know that certain spots will cast really sharp shadows and some other type of, of, of spot will cast more soft shadow. So you can adjust that depending on the type of light that you're trying to create. Now, once you're happy with the settings of your light, it's possible for you to duplicate this light multiple time in your scene and just take advantage of the settings that you already have adjusted. And that's what I want to do for the painting over to the other side. So I'm just going to select the light, duplicate it and move it to the other side. Now, as I'm moving it, nothing is being affected. That is because the selection don't get duplicate. So I need to select my objects again, the painting the floor, the walls and add it to my light selection. So 
now the light is lighting the elements that I have selected and added to the selection. So I don't need to do further adjustment to that spotlight because I did so on the first. And keep in mind that when you are duplicating lights, there are not instance, they are duplicate. So if you change the property on one of the lights, it will not affect the first light or the other lights that are duplicated from. Once you're satisfied, you can hide the light grip. Um, hiding the light grip will still give you access to any of the properties of the accent lights. You will have to select the light from the accent menu and then you'll have access to the property. So I hope that gives you a really nice preview on how to use accent lights. They are really useful for interior scene or to place emphasis on certain elements or object of your scene. Now make sure that you are using ray tracing if you want to have a nice shadow because because if I go back to my hardware rendering, you will see that I have the effect of the accent lights without having the shadow in my scene. So if you want to use accent light and include the shadows, you'll have to use ray tracing, which will also give you high fidelity and nice photorealistic quality rendering.